Did you know postpartum hemorrhage is a leading cause of death, which globally accounts for about 25% of the OB population? I want to break down the causes of a bleed with a quick review on assessment techniques with preventive care to help you better understand potential complications of your postpartum patient that is based off of my experience. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. Postpartum hemorrhage is from a significant blood loss that will occur within the first 24 hours of delivery that is referred to as primary. Blood loss after 24 hours would be considered secondary. So let's say you receive report from your L&D nurse in the OB. This is where you will be given all the pertinent information aside from your own hands-on assessment and HMP review known as history and physical. It's basically a summary of care notes from the OB providers. Before you receive your patient, you definitely want to review that. So the amount of blood loss from postpartum hemorrhage is differentiated by vaginal versus cesarean, also known as C-section. If the mother had a vaginal delivery, it would be greater than 500 mils of blood loss, it's considered a hemorrhage. Or if the mother had a C-section with greater than a thousand mil blood loss, it would be considered a hemorrhage as well. So the nurse giving you report will identify the cause of the bleed, which could be a laceration, possibly medication induced, which we'll go over, or possibly the newborn that was delivered with a vacuum assistance can result in a bleed as well, as I will cover causes in just a bit. So you got report, First thing you want to do is make sure mom and baby are safe. For this section, we'll solely focus on mother's postpartum care. So you want to start with a set of vital signs. It'll include your blood pressure, heart rate, saturation level, your respiratory rate, and your pain level. And you want to identify what's tolerable for the patient and what number is an ideal pain level for the patient. In addition, you also want to check strength and sensation of limb if they had an epidural, do they have sensation to touch? If they're still numb, you want to document the level of sensation felt from the patient and you want to enforce fall risk precautions, making sure they do not get out of bed and they have the call light within reach. You want to assess the home end sign. This is where you dorsiflex the ankle with toes up. So let's say this is your heel and these are your toes. You want to arch the foot up and if it reproduces a pain in the calf, it could be a sign of a DVT. So you would notify your healthcare provider per policy guidelines. So most importantly, what I want to highlight is the fundus. Yes, check the fundus. The fundus is the top portion, which is opposite side of the cervix. And the uterus is where the baby was housed and grew inside mama. As a review, during prenatal checks, the doctor will measure the fundus to assess growth and development of baby. So after delivery, the postpartum nurse is required to do fundal checks. So when doing a fundal check, inform the patient of what you're doing. So lie them flat in the bed. In an ideal setting, I usually assess after adequate pain management is achieved because it can be uncomfortable for the patient. So place one hand above the belly button and another hand on the bottom of the lower abdomen for support. Here you gently apply pressure. You should also look to see if your patient is having any vaginal bleeding during this assessment and assess the height, meaning is the fundus at the level of the belly button or two finger breaths above the belly button and monitor trends. As the fundus should continue to shrink and you also want to identify the position of the fundus, meaning is is it midline or is it shifted to the side? Usually when it's shifted to the side, your patient may have complaints of a need to urinate. So have them void and it will quickly resolve and just recheck and it'll be midline. However, for the patient that can't void and if their fundus is deviated, it can cause the patient to bleed because the bladder is full and pushing against the uterus. Therefore, there is like no contraction of the myometrium muscle so it can cause a bleed. Furthermore, you also want to identify and document if the fundus feels boggy, firm, 
with massage or it's just firm. So when the fundus is boggy, it tells you the uterus is not contracting and it's soft, putting the mother at risk for a bleed. To prevent a bleed, you wanna massage the fundus and if the patient is on Pitocin drip, based on your hospital policy, make sure it's infusing and infusing at the appropriate rate for the postpartum mother. Pitocin is great. It helps with contraction, therefore prevents bleeding. So your ideal fundal check would be immediately after delivery, the fundus should be midline, so center and firm, and typically near the level of the umbilicus. However, it varies. So now that you know the highlights of what needs to be assessed for your postpartum mama, let's talk about causes for postpartum hemorrhage. So history of the patient is key because what if your patient has a history of Von Wilbrand's disease, also known as VWD? This would be a high risk pregnancy as it's a great risk for a bleed so close monitoring is essential and frequent blood checks or the mother that had a placental abruption which is separation of the placenta from the uterus or the mother with DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulation. This is when small little blood clots form throughout the body, blocking small blood vessels. As platelets and clotting factors are used up, so symptoms would include chest pain, shortness of breath, and leg pain. This reminds me of a secondary bleed, meaning this can occur after 24 hours for your high risk patient. And also medications given during labor. So be mindful, some of those are magnesium sulfate, terbutaline, or nifedipine. These meds increase the risk of uterine atony, meaning it diminishes contraction and can result in a boggy fundus that can cause an increased risk of a bleed. Or the mother that suffered from a trauma, such as a laceration or vacuum assisted delivery and never ever assume a firm fundus you're in the clear. Always visually look and check to see your patient's pad count and how many times they're having to do peri care. Another common reason for a bleed is from a placental fragment. This can occur from a sudden gush of blood and it can also happen after the 24 hour mark. In this setting, you want to keep the patient calm, in bed, monitor symptoms, making sure patient does not become symptomatic. Make sure you want to notify the doctor on call to evaluate the patient at the bedside. Also check blood pressure trends and help support the blood pressure with fluids if hypotensive or pressors if acuity is high and check vital signs frequently. Typically what will happen is the doctor will come and check with an ultrasound after the bleed to see if there are any fragments of the placenta retained within the mom's uterus. That could be a reason for the bleed. So moving on to interventions. So with interventions, you always want to treat the underlying cause. So if it's a placental fragment, it can be manually removed. In this setting, pre-medicate the patient with IV pain meds, please do, such as fentanyl or Dilaudid based on what is ordered. This can also be removed in the operating room. It just depends on the preference of the doctor. Sometimes a hematoma can occur that goes unnoticed. So this is why it's so important to visually check the vaginal area. And in this setting, a stitch can be done to resolve the bleed. And sometimes vaginal packing is used to prevent bleeds from occurring as well. Some medications that can help stop the bleed is methergine, that's an awesome med, Pitocin, always commonly used a lot, or Hemabate. This allows for contraction and resolution of bleed. So postpartum discharge teaching. So a little visual of vaginal anatomy is key before discharge because when I have my shifts with mamas, I teach them, hey, you got a muscle which is attached to your uterus and it contracts to prevent bleeding. And the contraction may feel like cramps, it's uncomfortable, but it's a good thing that tells you and me that your body is doing what it needs to do. So you're going to have bleeding for the duration of six weeks. So they need to know this information before going home that they're going to have bleeding for the duration of six weeks. However, it's going to start to taper down. They need to know if they soak more than two pads within one hour, they need to notify the doctor or seek medical care because it shouldn't be that much. And as the weeks progress, they should start to taper 
down with the bleeding and not bleed so much. For the high risk mama, they're obviously going to be having more frequent OB checks, but that'll vary based on the doctor's recommendations. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.